Verse 19. And art confident that thou thyself art a guide of the blind, a light of them which are in darkness. This is the sixth advantage, depending on those preceding. The law not only instructed the Jews for themselves, but also for others, and in this they held that they enjoyed a great superiority over the other nations. A guide to the blind. The Gentiles are here called blind, for with all the lights of their philosophy, of their laws and their arts, they were after all blind, since with the exception of those of true religion, which they did not possess, there is no true saving light in the world a light of them which are in darkness. The rabbis called themselves the light of the world, to which our Lord appears to refer when he gives this title to his apostles. Verse 20, An instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, which hast the form of knowledge and of the truth in the law. An instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes. These titles explain clearly what the others indicate in metaphorical terms and further exalt the privileges of the Jews. Here we may remark that although to the Gentiles God had given abundance of temporal good things, all this was still as nothing in comparison of the blessings vouchsafed to the Jews, which has the form of knowledge and of the truth in the law. This does not signify semblance in contradistinction to substance, for it was the thing of which the Jews boasted. It means the representation or exhibition of truth and summary of knowledge which was contained in the law. The meaning is the same as when we speak of a body of divinity. The Jews considered that they had a body of truth and knowledge in the law. In these expressions, then, truth and knowledge are represented as embodied in a visible form. The Jews had that form in the law, that is to say, the law was to them a form and a model whence they were to take all the true notions of God, of his religion, and of the duty of man, and a rule to which they ought to be referred. In general, from all these advantages which God had so liberally bestowed on the Jews, we may collect that his goodness had been great in not entirely abandoning the human race, but in having still lighted up for it, in a corner of the earth, the lamp of his law, to serve as his witness. His wisdom has not been less conspicuous in having thus prepared the way for the mission of his Son, and the establishment of his gospel throughout the whole world, for the law was a schoolmaster until the coming of Christ. We also learn that when God does not accompany his external favors with the internal grace of his Holy Spirit, the depravity of man is such that, instead of turning to God, he multiplies his transgressions, as the apostle immediately proceeds to show by the example of the Jews. We see, too, how aggravated was their ingratitude in the midst of such distinguished benefits. Verse 21, Thou therefore which teachest another, teachest thou not thyself? Thou that preachest a man should not steal, dost thou steal? This and the two following verses are in the Vulgate without interrogation, but the ancient interpreters read them with the interrogation. The meaning in either case remains the same. After having exalted the advantages of the Jews above the Gentiles with as much force as they could have been done themselves, Paul unveils their hypocrisy and exhibits the vices which were concealed under so fair an exterior. He afterwards confirms the whole of his charges by the testimony of Scripture. In this manner he establishes more fully what he had said in the beginning of the chapter, that they condemned themselves and that they could not hope to escape the just judgment of God, but were accumulating a treasure of wrath. Teachest thou not thyself? This implies that the Jews did not practice the precepts of their law. It implies that they were practically ignorant of it preachest or proclaimest. There is no reason to suppose with Dr. McKnight that the learned Jews are here the persons addressed. The whole of the Jews are addressed as one person. What is said applies to them as a body and does not exclusively relate to the scribes and teachers. Should not steal? The sins here specified were evidently such as were practiced among the Jews. They are not merely supposed cases or specifications for illustration. It is taken for granted that as a body the sins mentioned were very generally chargeable to them. Would the apostle addressing the Jews as one man have asked why they were guilty of such a sin if they were not very generally guilty of it? Mr. Tholuck, then, has no ground to suppose the contrary.